Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and I teach a comparative anatomy lab. Today I'll be showing you the cat circulatory system. Now there is a lot when it comes to the mammalian circulatory system in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a series of photos from a cat dissection. I've labeled all the arteries. I've labeled them very nicely. We're going to go over exactly what each of them are supplying and because there are quite a lot for you to learn. I have put a list of exactly which ones we go over in the bottom of this video and the information. So let's go ahead and let's get started. We're going to begin with the flow of blood through the heart. Mammals have a four chambered heart, so two atria and two ventricle. Deoxygenated blood from the pre and post cava are collecting in the right atrium. The right atrium is going to send the blood that it's collected, which is deoxygenated, it's going to send it to the right ventricle. The blood is going to be pumped from the ventricle through the pulmonary trunk, and the pulmonary trunk bifurcates into the pulmonary arteries, sending blood to the lungs. So now the blood is becoming oxygenated and it's going to come back to the heart to get pumped to the rest of the body. So oxygenated blood from the lungs is going to come back through the left atrium. The atrium is then going to send that blood to the ventricle. The ventricle will then pump the blood to the systemic arch or the aortic arch. It depends on which name or preference you have for which name. Now there are several branches off the systemic arch. The first of which is the innominate or brachiocephalic artery. The second is the left subclavian. There's also the coronary, but that's not shown, but we all know the coronary is supplying the heart. And then the systemic arch continues to become the dorsal aorta. So now we're in systemic circulation and we're gonna begin with the upper half of the cat's body. The innominate artery is the first branch of the aortic arch, once again. And the innominate artery trifurcates into the common carotids and the right subclavian. So the carotids are carrying oxygenated blood to the face, the brain, and the scalp. And the right subclavian is carrying oxygenated blood to the right pectoral girdle and limbs. The left subclavian is the second branch off the systemic arch. Note that the arteries we're about to cover branch off the right subclavian as well. They're just not being shown. So branching off the left subclavian is the vertebral supplying the brainstem and the mammary artery supplying the chest muscles. We're not done yet, there are definitely a few more. The costocervical artery supplying the cervical and thoracic region of the body and the thyrocervical supplying the thyroid and cervical region of the body. Now, once we pass the thyrocervical artery, the subclavian continues to become the axillary artery and the axillary artery supplies the upper arm and the armpit. The axillary artery becomes the brachial artery once the humeral artery has branched off. The brachial artery supplies the lower arm and the hand. So now we're looking at the lower half of the body and for context, we are looking behind both the liver and the stomach. So the liver and the stomach have been pulled to the side so if you recall, the aortic arch continues to become the dorsal aorta, supplying blood to the rest of the body. And the first major branch off the dorsal aorta is the celiac artery. And the celiac artery is considered a major branch because it subsequently branches into the gastric artery, the splenic artery, the hepatic artery, the pyloric artery, the pancreatic duodenal artery, and there are several others as well. So we're gonna go over each of them. All right, so the first, branch off the celiac running behind the stomach is the hepatic artery supplying the liver. The second branch is the gastric artery supplying the stomach. So the third branch is the splenic artery and the splenic artery supplies the spleen. Also notice the gastroepiploic arteries supplying the stomach. And note that after the splenic artery branches off, the celiac becomes the gastroduodenal artery. Now, the next branch, and it's branching off the gastroduodenal, 
is the pyloric artery and the pyloric artery supplies the pyloric sphincter which is that muscle that expands and contracts to let food pass from the stomach into the duodenum of the small intestine and so after the pyloric artery branches off the gastroduodenal then becomes the pancreatico duodenal and the pancreatico duodenal is supplying the pancreas but it's also supplying the entirety of the small intestine Now you may have noticed the celiac continued to become several different arteries after certain arteries had branched off. So it continued to become the gastroduodenal artery after the splenic branch, and then it became the pancreaticoduodenal artery after the pyloric branch, and then the pancreaticoduodenal, which I haven't shown you, that subsequently becomes the superior mesenteric artery after the colic branch, and that's not shown. But that superior mesenteric artery connects back to the dorsal aorta as the second branch. All right, so the next branch off the dorsal aorta is the renal artery, and the renal artery supplies the kidneys. Following that is the ovarian artery, if it's a female, and the ovarian artery supplies the ovaries. And the next one is the inferior mesenteric artery supplying the colon. So the superior mesenteric was associated with the systemic circulation in the small intestine, the inferior mesenteric is supplying oxygenated blood to the colon. All right, so now we're in the lower half of the body, and the next branch is the iliolumbar, supplying the ilium and the iliacus muscle. Subsequent to that is the external iliac, also sometimes known as the epigastric, and the internal iliac, sometimes known as the hypogastric. The iliacs continue to become the femoral artery, supplying the hind limb, and also notice the umbilical artery branching off the internal iliac, and that is the artery, if uh, you recall, is coming from the fetus carrying deoxygenated blood to the mother because the fetus cannot oxygenate its own blood, so it does rely on the mother. And so deoxygenated blood is flowing through the umbilical artery to the mother, and then when the mother oxygenates that blood, it gets sent back through the umbilical vein. So here we have the umbilical artery. And that is everything for the CAT circulatory system. I do hope that this helped you. I also created a test your arterial knowledge quiz video that you are certainly welcome to use to help you study. And also I've created circulatory system videos for the shark and the mud puppy. So thanks for watching.